Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Well, today we are hosting our annual middle school maglev contest. It's the 21st year we're hosting the event. There are seven different categories that students can compete in. There are two appearance categories, a scale model and a futuristic design. And then uh, the remaining categories are based on speed. So we have a gravity track, an electrified track, uh, a wind-powered track, and a self-propelled track. Students will either use battery power or balloon power to propel their vehicles. It's a wonderful exercise where all the children can learn what the principle of maglev is. And uh, they'll uh, see how we can move things on a levitated uh, platform. And uh, later on, hopefully, they'll like engineering and maybe make the systems that we need in this country. We're uh, preparing right now for the maglev competition uh, that's happening down the hall. And, um, and we're exploring the magnetic uh, levitation technology with our students. For the category that we competed, which is gravity, uh, we let gravity take the cars down, and um, it's uh, based on the number of magnets that you use and how many passengers you hold, which are pennies. It's about um, a lot about science, uh, efficiency, and friction, uh, teamwork, you know, working together, and, uh, and taking pride in your work. There's magnets on the bottom of the car or whatever it's using. If you put south and south together, it'll float. So it'll float on the track and you can put and it'll go along the track. I'm doing mine in the futuristic category, so I was like we were watching the Discovery launch and um, I was thinking like what the rocket ships in the future might look like. So that's why I made it like this with like a solar panel on the side of it to like fuel the lights and stuff. My class they seem to love it to be honest. Um, we got students coming in every single day during lunch period. It's like, you know, we can't keep them out. Uh, but they're definitely uh, they're definitely involved, they're interested, uh, which is a good thing. We're standing on the side so it will go faster, so it won't get stuck in the track. This is to like weigh it down so it won't just flip over and stuff. We did it by yeah, ourselves. Yeah, we did it by ourselves. I think this is fantastic because it really shows how much Long Island kids are really into science and math and technology and that's something that a place like Brookhaven and other places around the island are really trying to foster and I think it's a great thing. We're really hoping that kids will take these kinds of experiences and will really get energized by it and will continue on with their academic and professional careers to continue on with scientific pursuits like this. And the only way to really start somebody's interest is to start it as a kid and then continue on from there. We give them uh, two practice runs if they want so that they can get used to this particular track. And uh, we don't time the, the practice runs. And we collect their, their pro, uh, portfolios, which is their design portfolios. And, uh, and then we, uh, we set them up for a uh, run. Everybody in the 8th grade participates in the competition. We have about 170 students. We narrow down to our 15 best competitors and then we bring them here with their design portfolios that explains how they built their vehicle, uh, all the tests that they did, the modifications that they made, and we all hope for the best. We want to come home winners. I made my base wood because I wanted to have adjustable magnets in case like the track was too thin or too wide. The air inside the balloon pressurizes and then when you let it go, the air comes out of the pipe and it pushes it along. And the magnets which keep it elevated, like make it go so that it goes along the track. You know, the kids have a great time at this competition. As a matter of fact, we work on a project for about four weeks at school. And I even open the classroom on two Saturdays when they come in to try to qualify for the competition because we can only bring 15 students. When I met Jim Powell and uh, Gordon Danby, the inventors of this uh, technology, uh, they convinced me that this was the way that we can uh, make a new system in this country. And it can be done uh, profitably and cheaply, uh, a lot less expensive than uh, wheel and track technology. 
And, um, and I think that we need to have something of this magnitude to manufacture in this country or to, to remain a leader. It's going to be my favorite thing because I got like a famous person's autograph. They created the maglev. Basically, maglev is the, is the transport system for the future, for the 21st century. We invented it back in the 20, 20th century, back in 1966. Uh, there are a lot of excitement in the U.S. then, but then they chose not to go ahead with it. But Japan did build our system, and it's now operating. The Japanese National Railway, when they heard about us from our publication, they came to visit us, and they proceeded to build the thing we invented. We had very senior political figures went to Japan and wrote on this and said, why can't Americans invent things like this? And our improved system, <coughs> unlike the Japanese system, doesn't only carry passengers, it carries trucks and autos. So you can take your auto with you and travel across the country and then have your country, your auto, when you get to uh, San Francisco, say, uh, for less cost than it would be by driving. So what we're trying to do is to get the United States to test this and then start building a 29,000 mile national network. So that's our objective. How do you think it would change the world if all the cars were on magnets? Like it would help the environment because like they wouldn't run on gas and stuff, so it would be better.